Hi, and welcome to the lecture on subject-verb agreement. What is meant by subject-verb agreement? Every verb has to agree with its subject in numbers and person. Let's review. What are subjects and what are verbs? A subject is a person, place, thing, or idea that is doing or being something. It usually appears before the verb in the English language. A verb is what the subject is doing, its action, or its state of being. Here are some example sentences. The Saints team plays in the Superdome. New Orleans is a city in Louisiana. The dogs in the park chase after the cats. Let's look. What is the subject of the first sentence? The subject is team. What is the team doing? The team plays. Team is singular. Plays is also singular. New Orleans is a city in Louisiana. What's the sentence about? Its subject is New Orleans. Its state of being is that it is a city in Louisiana. And so is is the linking verb that links New Orleans to the noun city. The dogs in the park chase after the cats. Who or what is the sentence about? The sentence is about dogs. And what are the dogs doing? The dogs are chasing. So chase is the verb. Dogs is plural. We know that because it's a noun with an S, meaning multiple dogs. And the verb is chase. Chase is also a plural verb. And we know that because it doesn't have an S. We want to make sure verbs agree in person and in number, so let's review. There's first person, second person, and third person, and they're singular and plural. When one refers to first person, talking about I, the me, the my. Second person is the you, taking your finger from yourself and pointing to a singular you or a, a collective you. Third person is he, she, or it in singular, or they in plural. And you'll notice that when I conjugate the verb to walk, the verb walk stays the same in first person, singular and plural, second person, singular and plural, and third person, plural. However, third person singular, the verb adds an S. And this is one of the rules with third-person singular regular verbs, conjugating. Regular verbs change very little. These verbs take an S or an ES in the third-person singular present tense. Let's look back again. I walk, you walk, she walks, he walks, it walks. For example, the dogs in the park chase after the cats. As before, dogs is the subject and chase is the verb. Dogs are plural. Therefore, their verb does not have an S. Let's look at that chart again. In third person, dogs would be they. Walk is plural, does not have an S. So the verbs in third person plural, do not carry an S. However, the dog in the park chases after the cats. I've changed the subject from plural in the previous sentence to singular in this current sentence. Therefore, I have to change the verb to third person singular. I have to add an S. Irregular verbs have different rules, different ways to conjugate. But one thing remains the same. In third person singular, an irregular verb carries an S in it somewhere. We're going to look at three common irregular verbs. The verb to be, the verb have, has, the verb do, does. I am, we are, you are, 
she, he, or it is. You see that S there? They are. I have. You have. She, he, or it has. Ding, ding, ding. Again, you have an S in that third person singular verb. Checking for agreement is simple. You just need to identify the subject and the verb. Subjects or verbs are never in the prepositional phrases. You want to pare the sentence down to its basics. Let's look at this example sentence. The barista with the red hair works in the coffee shop in the morning. This is a long sentence. There are multiple prepositional phrases in this sentence. And so if you want to check to see if your subjects and your verbs agree, you want to pare the sentence down to its basics. You can start by eliminating the prepositional phrases because prepositional phrases are not necessary in the sentence for it to be a simple sentence, but they are needed for clarification. So let's take out the prepositional phrases and what do we have? With the red hair can be removed. In the coffee shop can be removed and in the morning. And what you have is you have the barista works. Who or what is the sentence about? It's about the barista, the coffee maker. And what is the barista doing? The barista works. Barista is a person. It's a he or a she. So it's third person singular. Let's check to see if that verb has an S. Works. It does. It has an S. Your subject and your verb agree. Let's look at some more examples. When you have a compound subject, which is two subjects together added with an and, a conjugation, a co a conjunction, a solid defense and an organized leader are what the Saints, need, Saints team needs to be successful. Now, what you have is you have a compound subject, which is defense and leader. And so the verb needs to be plural because two things equal a they. Third person plural does not have an S. When you have one or the other, you take the subject closest to the verb to decide whether or not the verb will be plural or singular. So a solid defense or an organized leader is what the Saints team needs to be successful. We have an or here, so we're going to look at the leader. Leader is singular, so the verb is needs to contain an S. Sometimes your subjects actually appear after the verb. Let's look at this sentence. There is or there are two things the Saints team needs to be successful, a solid defense and an organized leader. To figure out if is or are necessary, you take the subject and move it to the front. Look at my example. Two things are needed for the Saints team to be successful. A solid defense and an organized leader. Aha! Things is third person plural, so you don't need an S in that verb are. Are is third person plural. These agree in subject and number. There are also collective nouns. Collective nouns are words such as team, group, audience, family, and they can take on singular or plural verbs depending on whether that noun is referring to a singular unit or the members of a group. Let's look at an example. The team is ready to play. Team is your subject. It's a singular team even though it looks like you're talking about multiple people. The team itself is singular, and so it's third person, singular. The verb has to have an S. The family arrives at 9 p.m. You're thinking the family is referring to multiple people. Well, it is, but you're talking about one singular family here. Therefore, it's an it, and that would be third person singular. So that verb has to have an S. Let's check. Family is the subject. Arrives is the verb. It has an S. You are agreeing in number. 
indefinite pronouns exist. There are words like everyone, someone, no one, neither. And again, although those words seem like they refer to many people or plural nouns, they take a singular verb. Examples. Everyone likes to eat chocolate. Someone is waiting for me at the house. No one knows what time we are leaving. In these three examples, the indefinite pronoun is singular, third person singular. And therefore, each of these verbs, likes, is, knows, has to have an S in it for the, to be agreed. And this is the end of the lecture on subject-verb agreement.